Hello Kathy, my name is Michael. May you please help me with this question about natural selection and speciation. Thank you, Michael. Here we go. Um, mm, that's <laughs> the Grand Canyon. So we already know it's about geographical isolation automatically because what are we going to have in the Grand Canyon? A whole bunch of different geographical barriers that these poor little animals have to negotiate. So let's read this. Okay. Um, we've got our extract. It's all about the Grand Canyon squirrels. I didn't even know squirrels lived in the Grand Canyon, but here we go. When the Grand Canyon was formed, the population of the ancestral species developed. Okay. So immediately we know we're dealing here with old Darwin and his natural selection. One of the species is the cab squirrel, which has black fur and a fluffy tail. The other is Abbott squirrel, which has gray fur and a bushy tail. So what are the two characteristics we're looking at here? We're looking at black fur so, and gray fur, so it is fur coat color, and fluffy tail versus a bushy tail, although I'm not sure if that actually, uh, it looks the same to me, hey? So <laughs> maybe the drawings not, or, or the pictures aren't that great, but uh, yeah, they, <laughs> anyway, so you've got fur coat color and you've got the tail type. Okay, the members of the two species have similar size, similar shape, similar diet, and they, but they are no longer in contact with one another and have become different during their separation. In other words, we now have speciation that has taken place. Okay, so there's our kebab squirrel and we have our little abbots squirrel. So it says, define a population. So what is a population? Now watch this, it is so easy. It is organisms of different ages that belong to the Look at this, same species and live in the same area and are able to interbreed to produce fertile offspring. Okay, same species, same area, and they interbreed. So people, if you have a population of mice at your house, and, oh, I hope I don't, and I have a population of little mice at my, are they quite cute, rather mice than rats, and I have little mice at my home, 10 k's away from you, are they the same population? No. Why? Can they interbreed? No, because they can't get to each other. It's not like the little mouse is going to organize Uber and take a drive to your house. So it's not going to happen. They cannot interbreed. And that is what separates populations. Can they interbreed? No. And if they can't interbreed, they can't produce fertile offspring. Okay, so very important. So define a population, it's the easiest thing on the planet. Remember, same species, they live in the same area or the same location and they are able to interbreed. But it's not just interbreeding. They can interbreed and produce infertile young. Then it's useless because then the, it dies out. They need to interbreed and produce a, a, a viable, fertile offspring. So let's go. Next question. Um, I love this. It's so easy. I mean, if this is, guys, you should get full marks for this, man. Other than mutations, ha, ah, now we're looking at causes of variation. So they want three causes of variation. So what is going to cause variation other than mutation? Number one, you've done meiosis. So crossing over during pro phase one. That immediately tells you it's meiosis. Number two, still meiosis. We're going to have random um, arrangement 
of chromosomes. During metaphase, those chromosomes arrange themselves at random. So in one case, you're going to have the male chromosomes going up and the female chromosomes, whatever. It's going to change. All right? Number three, you're going to have, again, random mating. Okay? And number four, you're going to have random fertilization. So which little sperm gets to which little egg? Which combination gets to which combination? All right, so I've given you four, they only wanted three, and then your fifth one is mutations. So crossing over during prophase one, and then still meiosis, you have random arrangement of the chromosomes at that equator during metaphase, everything's in the middle, remember, metaphase, middle, and random mating, random fertilization. There you go. As easy as that. People learn that. Mutation, crossing over in prophase one, random arrangement of chromosomes during metaphase, random mating, random fertilization. There you go. Simple, simple. And they're going to ask this. They'll ask it in a multi-choice. They'll ask it in a short question. They'll ask it in a long question. You will get it. It's worth learning it. You're going to have at least three marks there. And every mark counts at the end of the day. All right, so let's see here. Next question. State two characteristics that distinguish the two squirrel species from each other. I mean, like, really, two characteristics. Huh, well, what are the two characteristics? They tell you. You read it. Black fur and grey fur. Now, if you write black fur and grey fur, you get naught. And if you write fl fluffy tail and bushy tail, you get naught. What are we looking at? We're looking at fur coat color. That, that is your characteristic. It's the color of the coat. And the type of tail. Not whether the tail is bushy or fluffy. I still think it's the same thing, but it doesn't matter. It's the type of tail that's going to matter. Okay, let's see here. Now, it was discovered that the two species of squirrel were two separate species. So they tell you two species of squirrel, two separate species. Describe what can be done to confirm the two squirrels belong to two different biological species. People, people, this question doesn't even take learning. Um, if you want to know whether you belong to somebody or a baby belongs to somebody or whether this is the father of the child or, or this is the mother of the child if a kid was stolen at birth, what do you do? You do a DNA test. So I'm not going to write this, I really. You're going to do a DNA test. You're going to test the one species, you're going to test the other species, a couple of individuals, and then you're going to compare the two and you're going to say, ah, oh, it's different, the DNA. Okay, so DNA test. It's quick, it's easy, it takes two or three weeks and it's done. Okay, or you could take uh, uh, individuals from the two different species, try and get them to interbreed, if they interbreed. Then, if they interbreed, check whether fertilization takes place. And if fertilization takes place, are, those, are the offspring fertile? So that's quite a long process, but that's the other alternative. All right, let's look at our question five. Describe how speciation of the two Grand Canyon squirrels took place through geographical speciation. Now we're going to use the question to start our answer. So we're going to say, first of all, the pop and I, listen, you don't put bullet points, hey? I'm doing it to help you. So the population, um, so that's your original population, population of the Grand Canyon squirrels. was divided, or you can say split, into two populations. I'm just going to put pops here. So two populations, okay, by a geographical barrier. <sighs> geographical barrier, which was a canyon. All right, now... What's very important is the two populations, please, I'm writing pop because I'm running out of time here. The two populations cannot 
interbreed, because there's this barrier, interbreed, all right? And because they cannot interbreed, what happens? There is no gene flow. Now, if there's no gene flow, well, that's it. So what do we have? We have, uh, um, you've, you've got uh, natural selection, occurs, uh, occurs independently within each population group. Okay, why? Due to environmental um, differences. Okay, and that results in each group developing genotypically and phenotypically um, differently. Okay, to a point, uh, let me just put. So they are now genotypically and phenotypically different. So that, so if barrier is removed, they will not interbreed. Okay, why? Because two new species have developed. Okay, 